What is up guys and gals, my name is Splattercat and we are here today at the Nerd Castle playing the next episode of Mountain Blade Warband. In the previous episodes we had taken a quest to find some nasty little looters and we couldn't necessarily find them, we were having some issues. So I ran around off camera for a little while looking for them, the problem is they have no like boundary. And I've always suggested that for the missions with wandering enemies they should be forced, so let's say you take Yelkala or Jelkala, right? And you get the quest from there. I've always been a proponent of the fact that if you get the quest from there, if there's wandering bandits, he specifically says the bandits are in this area, that they should stay within the principality. So I think Jelkala controls Bovrin and Roldi. And so I always felt like the bandits should just like stay in this region and you should have to run them down that way. But that's not how it works. They could literally be like all the way out here and we just wouldn't know it. So I'm going to abandon that cause for now in the interest of keeping this whole thing interesting. I don't really want to get caught up working on too many side things. Now, in this episode we have a couple things we want to think about. I went through the votes for what you guys wanted me to play as, and it seems like the majority wanted me to play Nords. And I am very, very familiar with Nords. I'm super, super familiar with Nords. Swadia, you said that Jeff Major had done it, and I'm a big fan of Jeff Majors. So I guess we'll stay away from that for now. I may actually just kind of freelance and just grab people as I'm around. But let's head on up to Nordland then. If you guys want me to play as Nords, let's go up to the top. And we'll play around with some of the units we have up there. How am I doing on Rodox right now? I've got what looks like... 4, 10, okay, so I may keep Rodok Crossbowman on board for the remainder of our campaign, but for now, let's go up and kill some Sea Raiders, that's how we're going to start the episode off, and then from there, I think what I'd like to do is maybe start scouting around for some quests, doing some minor stuff for the lords in the area, seeing if we could butter up the faction that we're going to be taking part in, hey, there's five looters, just kind of, I'm sorry, Sea Raiders, they're actually about to get steamrolled. Are they outrunning me right now? I think they are. Nice oh, we got them. Alright, so let's get into this combat and resolve it really fast because I don't think there's any real need to turn this into a long-winded fight. Let's see if I can aim better today. You guys said aim like right above them, so that's what I'm going to do. I don't have the range finder that you have in some of the mods. Well, they're almost there. I'm getting closer. I can do this if I don't get hit by an arrow first. Oh, I got hit by an arrow first. I'm scared now. I'm terrified of flying projectiles and that guy with a spear. They are both equally terrifying to me. Soldiers, help your lord. Stab him in the face. Oh, I stabbed him in the shield. And it was also, oh, they got him with an arrow in the back. Shady, but I'll take it. All right, we didn't lose anybody, obviously. We've got a rusty fighting axe. This is actually, I give almost all of my named guys those fighting axes because they're great for destroying shields. There's another fight under our belt. Let's have a look and see who can be upgraded. We've got another trained footman in there. We've got a Nord veteran. Very cool. That means we are one step away from top tier troops, which is exactly where you want to be before you engage in any type of serious campaigning. Let's go up to the top of the map, and we're going to see if that bandit lair has respawned yet. And if it has, we're going to take the quest to destroy it one more time. But if it hasn't, then we're going to find some other ways to occupy ourselves. I'm going to try and stay away. Hey, occupy me. Sireda, occupy me with your death. Come on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You'll drink from my skull, I know. You're very creative with your use of liquid receptacles. And this one, since they have the ground that pretty much negates my cavalry advantage, I'm actually going to fight this one from on foot. So I'm going to leave my horse back there, and hopefully he doesn't catch any arrows or anything. Normally, as long as he doesn't take damage, he should just hang out right here, and you should be perfectly fine. Let me disengage my archers, too. I prefer for them to be part of a different force back up and in here. And so that was easy peasy lemon squeezy. They're all now in here. Unfortunately, Scooch is in, the, is in the way now. So Scooches, come here, buddy. There we go. Let's move you to the back so that maybe these guys right here will act as sort of meat shields. We'll put him downhill so that Scooches is nice and safe. In fact, I would duct tape these guys to Scooches if I could just to make sure that Scooches doesn't eat any arrows because arrows are, well, it's, it's a great source of malnutrition for our equestrian friends. Now then... Where are these guys? I can only assume that on the other side of the mountain, there's an equally sized incline that they're going to have to climb up and over, so it may be a little bit of a trip before we find ourselves fighting them. Or are they coming from downhill? My troops are sort of facing this. Oh, there they are right there. They're coming from downhill. Let me see if I can aim better here. Hey, I can. I hit somebody. It's a miracle. Ooh, I hit two people. I am the greatest. 
Fist pump the air! Oh, he juked that one. Well, he kind of stopped to throw stuff. I'm gonna slash this guy right in the face. Although he has a creative face guard, so I don't know if that's the... Oh, got him. There we go. I slashed him in his ass. I'm actually just gonna... Wow, this guy is resilient. He has a substantial amount of defense. He is just not going down, and so now... I mean, it's a little late, but we can tell the infantry to charge. I'm not reloaded, but let me see if I can get a shot off here. Nah, I shot behind him. Alright, so yeah, Yes, the sh battle cry of the victorious parties. Yeah. Javelins, Nordic swords, alright, whatever, that's cool. I do like my crossbow, but I may swap over to a normal bow later on down the line. Did I pick up anything? Okay, I've already got a Nordic sword. My boots are better. My arrows are completely fine because I'm not even using the proper weapon. I do sort of want to use javelins. Javelins can be a lot of fun if you can get them to impact. The throw angle is kind of weird with those in that I've never been very efficient with them. Let's continue our long walk on the beach with all of our Nordic friends and see if we can find ourselves a bandit base to get a couple thousand extra XP. It's always a nice source. Oh, and there it is right there. So that's exactly why you should be checking in every now and again. And so we're probably going to close out this episode by doing the same thing we did in the previous one. How fast am I moving? 5.6 versus 5.3. I could run him down right now, but I'm more interested in talking to Boyar Mariga. So let's go talk to him and get the quest one more time. We'll go in, wipe out some more bandits, and after that point, we should have at least another level up or two, I think. Yeah, so he's going to give us the same quest again. And so let's get ourselves paid. We could definitely use the cash. We'll also get in any fights along the way that make themselves apparent. But for now, yeah, Rodok Sharpshooter's in there. Cool. Let's move them up further towards the top of the list. I should probably check the tavern, too, for named people. Let me see if I can find anybody, really. Let's see, Hired Blades. Hired Blades are actually really good. They're a super underestimated troop. The only problem is they're a little expensive, but they are quite good at what they do. If you are in the market for some mercenaries, having a large retinue of Hired Blades, like 20 or so of them, can be an amazing, amazing boon to your force. I want to be careful when we fight this fight, because we, if we end up getting damaged or knocked out. Nice well, I guess we'll fight this big group of Sea Raiders first because they're guarding their base. They're standing guard. They're like, hey, what's in that box? And unfortunately, we are in the box. I'm going to put the archers down right here. Maybe line my infantry up slightly behind this tree so that at least one of them or two of them can be shielded. I mean, they've all got large shields except for that guy with the glaive right there. So he should be all right. That's always been one of my things about... Rodox is always a little bit weak as a matter of the fact that they don't have any shields as part of their infantry. Even their sergeants in a lot of cases come with those big old glaives and I think that really puts them at a disadvantage for sieges. One of the things that the mods have done to address this fact is that they've actually added in alternate gear for a lot of the infantry. How far is that flying? I can't really see with the game in windowed mode but I think I'm firing way over their heads like always. So we're actually just going to aim center mass there. There it goes. So maybe we'll get some freebie skill points here. And I'm not trying to eat an arrow in the face, so let me get my shield out. And I'm actually going to have my infantry charge now, and let me circle around the back, and I'm going to start picking on some of the guys that are using these ranged weapons to interfere with the fight. So anybody that's skirmishing right now is a problem. Because IRL, like if this was a real conflict, I sincerely doubt that you'd be skirmishing into the backs of your own troops. That seems like a way to kill off way more of your own guys with friendly fire than... Ooh, I got stabbity stabbed. That's no fun. I should learn just not to approach when they're trying to stab me, but I always like to tempt fate in this game. He's routing, and so we're going to get rid of him. And that's the end of the combat. I don't even think we lost anybody there, although I wasn't watching the combat log, so I could be wrong. Yeah, we lost nobody, so we also captured a couple, which is really good. We need to take those to our Ransom Broker. Now, we've got Balanced Throwing Axes, a reinforced Nordic Shield, 523 HP. I am going to have to swap that out. The loss in coverage, I mean, that's an insane amount of HP for a shield. That is, in fact, a very, very good thing for us to be using. We'll leave the remainder. Let's upgrade our troops while we're here. Another Veteran. Turn them into warriors, and the spearman can become a sergeant. Oh, the sergeant does have a shield. 
Well then, what do I know? And he's also got those crazy, it's not like a normal sword, it's more like a giant machete. And it's a pretty scary looking weapon. I mean, if somebody jumped out of an alley with that thing at me, I'd be like, ah, take my wallet. And I just kind of shove my wallet towards them because I don't fight with machetes. Mm-mm. Let me save because I haven't saved in about 45 minutes. And then we'll jump in on the Sea Raider landing. Actually, how's my health looking? I'm pretty wounded. So let me camp for a few minutes. We're going to camp for just a wee bit of time. Although there are a lot of big groups of Sea Raiders out here that are making me nervous. Making me very nervous. So let's get into our tent. And as we wait, I'm not going to heal very quickly. That is the downside to this whole thing is that... Healing is not actually we can rest in the castle. Let's go rest in Beluga the castle that whales swim by I guess and Once we're inside the castle. We'll wait here for a little bit. We'll give it like a 20 count We'll have to pay for room and board and obviously they'll be consuming all kinds of food They'll be pooping everywhere. They'll be ruining our ruining our relations with the castle Lord But whatever there goes the deal with looters quest. We failed that luckily. We only lose reputation with Jelkala, we're probably not going to go back there for any extended period of time anyways, so he I don't really care I mean not something that I'm gonna stress myself out over How are we doing on HP right now? 37 I think I'll take it. Let's go ahead and jump in on the sea raider landing Hopefully it spawns in with elite troops good. We at least got some veteran. Yeah, it's actually a full force of veterans Very good. I'm gonna have them follow me and let's get on in here. Now, the only downside to having them follow me, we've got one over there, is that when they follow you, they don't attempt to be very aggressive, meaning they won't kind of dash in and try and save you. Okay, there's a couple enemies over here, but on the plus side, if you put them in that follow me mode, they won't run off to the side and get themselves killed fighting with enemies they can't handle single-handedly. Like, one guy will run off to fight like 20 dudes, and while that's super manly, it's not something that is conducive to living a long time. In fact, I'm pretty sure it's going to lower their life expectancy. Hey, throwing axes there, man. Not cool. Throwing your farming and field apparel reduction accessories at me. I don't accept that. That is not noteworthy behavior. Well, I mean, it's negatively noteworthy behavior, but it's still not behavior that I'm really fond of. At least not in my direction. If the axe was going in your direction, I'd probably be much more biased. But anyways... This guy's throwing rocks, which is just childish. So let's get over here and handle this. He can't even block because he has a knife. Anybody else jumping out here? No, I think the remainder's gonna be on the other side of the field. So I'm gonna tell everybody to charge at this point. We have leveled up, and I think we're probably gonna get two more level ups by destroying this bandit lair. Okay. So I think we've only got these three remaining, actually. And the big problem here is that those over there are going to start skirmishing while I go to fight this guy. Oh, there's two over here. They were using camu flags. Those dirty, crafty camel flags. Hiding people in the bushes. And down he goes. And this guy with the axe right here, I'm actually not that scared of because that reinforced shield is going to give me a lot of extra HP in my shield to play with. So even though he gets like a two times or three times modifier for using an axe against a shield, not going to save him here. Your own troops do block your sword strikes, which can be a little bit difficult to get around. So if you're seeing this and you're like, why isn't he swinging right now? Well, because my own troops, my sword will bounce off them. Like, I can't slash my own guys to death because I don't think that would endear me to my home faction. But at the same time, I'm not very good at aiming stabs like so through the sides of my troops either. And I'm not a big fan of the stabs anyways. They never seem to do enough damage. I could probably actually crossbow this guy. Nope, not enough. And he's got some Javelis that he's going to be throwing at me. Luckily, they all seem to be pointed at that guy. Affectionately named Ralph. So as long as Ralph is willing to sink the damage, I'm not going to worry about it. No, Ralph, don't die for the cause. You're supposed to make the other guy die for his. Come on now. Well done, Ralph. You and your mustache will live to fight another day. Got a bunch of gear here. Unfortunately, they haven't really been stealing a whole lot lately. They've been doing a very bad job at being bandits. We're going to take the bread. We'll take the chicken. But everything else, honestly, I'm not... Let me get rid of some of this. Well, actually, we're carrying around reasonably valuable stuff. I mean, get rid of the bent arrows. We'll take that helmet. And I don't really feel like sifting, if I'm to be super honest. 
Hey, there's our first top tier troop. And so as you can see, he's got banded mail. He's got a crazy bearded axe thing going on. He's got the shield of his people, the Huskarl's shield, or the House Carls. Apparently, I'm saying it wrong. But where I come from, a U makes a U sound when it's in Nordic respects. I don't know. There's no umlaut. Since it's lacking an umlaut, I will defer, and from now on I will call them House Carl. Damn it, where did Mariga go? There is nothing I hate more than not getting paid. Let's talk to Gastia. Let's ask and the location of somebody and Mariga. He should be close to Vetsine. Where is Vetsine at? Let's take a look here. He couldn't have gotten too far. Actually, we've been camping for like three days, so I may be wrong. I think Vetsine... God, don't make me go into the journal and find this place. Oh, it's over here. He's patrolling, maybe. I don't really see any other reason for him to go out in the cuts over here, so... We'll follow these farmers over, make sure that they don't get repressed. And we shall answer their cries of help, help, if they need them. Boy, ah, Mariga. I'm going broke right now feeding my troops. Maybe you should be... There he is. Pay me, man. And so there it is. We've gone up to level 11. We've gotten three renown, 1,500 dinars, enough to keep us fed for another three weeks. And our relation has gone up. He's now cooperative with us. And you might be saying, well, he's probably going to be our enemy. Why would you want him to be cooperative? Believe me, it helps out later on down the line. The more enemies you have, the more difficult your life is going to be. How are we doing on Renown right now? 62, not very well. We are not very renowned. But I guess I'd be... I'd rather be renowned than reverbed. God, that was a bad joke. But I said it anyways. I thought about it and I said, you know what? I have no material right now, so I'm going to fire and I'm just going to hope that my dart hits. For the longest time, I thought that when you played darts, the point was to hit the center. That is until I played Grand Theft Auto 4. And then I actually learned like the real rules of darts and I was like, well, I learned something today. Nobody I know actually like plays darts that much. I mean, I played darts once I got to college, but that's completely different. That's darts with motivation of getting super, super drunk. Let's go to Vercheg. And we'll start... We've got to drop off all this loot that we've picked up anyways. And once we get here, our plan is going to be to vendor that loot. And we're going to start actually doing quests for some of these major cities to raise our esteem in them. And then once the steam has been raised we will think about finding some lords and making some friends. I'm going to try and play this through as a good guy, so I'm going to take most of the options that are going to land me with honor and honorable allies are what I'm going to try and stick with. That appears as though it's been shopped poorly. <laughs> the part of your G is missing. Let's go to the tavern first. See if maybe this is... Hey, it's Matheld, my favorite follower. And so with Matheld, I'm just going to speed through all that, and I'm going to give you her backstory. She's the daughter of a Thane. And she's very, very expensive, but she's my favorite because she's a warrior lady. She's a shield maiden, and she kicks a lot of ass once you level her up. God, this tavern is not doing very good business. I feel sorry for you, tavern keeper. Also, your haircut. But that's beside the point. Let's get in here, and I'm going to sell the day-old chicken because it's going to go bad before we can do anything with it anyways. I'm going to save some of this stuff to equip Matheld with before I get rid of all of it. Unfortunately, we haven't picked up any armor for her, but she does come with okay armor to begin with, so I guess we'll probably be alright. And have a look through his gear list too, to make sure that there's not anything in here that I want, although the Bernie that we have right now is very, very good. No, actually he doesn't have anything that I want. Now, how do these guys work? Well, these extra followers, I always put them at the top of the list because I want them to get military experience. And we can go to their equipment roster, and as you can see, we can actually equip them with anything that we would normally use. I'll give her a helmet, I'll give her that shield. She's already got a Nordic sword, but I'm going to give her that battle axe because I like the way it chops through shields better. Once we've got that, let's have a look at our level ups. We've leveled up twice, and we actually are ready to work on intellect, which is a good thing because we need the skill points. At this point in our journey, I think it's probably going to be good for us to start taking points in Trainer. What Trainer does is it redistributes our XP to our troops so that we don't have to fight these pesky, kind of grindy battles in between every single fight anymore. Once we've got enough training and enough level ups, you can actually go from bottom tier to top tier in a matter of a couple days just training people, which is a very, very good skill to have. I'm also going to increase... Oh... I think I may take Matheld, and actually once I get her up to like strength 12, 
I may have her be our doctor. I've put points into surgery already. And I think I would prefer... Let's iron out some of our combat skills first. So I think a 4 in all of our combat skills is going to be a pretty rudimentary place to start, but it does give us a slight advantage when functioning on the battlefield. Crossbows, I should probably... I mean, we're going to switch to archery, I think, later on. Let me put some points into two-handed weapons, since I had expressed a kind of plan to use those at some point. And let's go talk to the Guildmaster and see what jobs he has on offer here. I went to the wrong node, but it's okay. It'll work out in the end. I don't see a Guildmaster here. I don't have the benefit of a horse, so it's going to take me a moment to get around. I think the Guildmaster is going to be right here on this little balcony. Yeah, he likes to be up here on the top so that he can look down on everybody else. That's why people live on hills, too. If you look in any city, rich people always live on the hills because they like to look down on people. Let's see. Let's ask him for a job, and he wants us to escort a caravan. Not bad, and it's going to Suno, so yeah, we're going to take that job. And we're going to escort this guy down to Suno. So you'll see he'll pop in right here. He's got 18 soldiers with him. Let's see if we can actually... The giant Vercheg banner is getting in the way. There he is right there. Let's talk to him. And we're going to take him through a safe route. And this actually is a good quest to cut your teeth on if you're like level 1 or level 2. These guys follow you wherever you go. And because you're slow, they're slow. You don't have the risk of ditching them. And so I'm going to try not to lose him as we go down to our ultimate goal. What's my party limit right now? 56. I kind of want to cap out because I am planning on signing up as a mercenary with one of the lords here in Nords in the near future. Suno is going to be down here to the south, and I'd rather do this quest quickly rather than slowly because we are running out of time for this episode. And so there it is right there. Let's head down to Talburl first. And if you lose them, I think you fail the quest automatically. And so what you'll see right here, I did want to point out total experience gained through training, 48. Some troops are ready to upgrade. If you look at our footmen, they leveled up from that experience, which is a very, very good thing. Let's head down this way, maybe fight. No, I don't want the caravan. The problem is the caravan is going to jump in as an ally on that battle. And we don't want them to do that because if they get killed, if they lose units, that puts us in an awkward situation. Let's head on over to Suno, and as soon as we get there, there it is. We got ourselves paid a thousand experience for that quest, and it was very, very simple. So as you can see, that thousand experience right there probably would have jumped you from level one to level three if you were a brand new character. We didn't get paid much silver for it, but it's something. And typically what you want to do is pick up a quest here to go back the similar way. Now I understand it's probably not going to work out that way. There are a lot of cities out there. To visit and there are a lot of ways that they can point us around for these quests but and eh, my horse is allergic to stairs which is yep there it is right there he hits the stairs and he's just like nope not gonna do it scooches cannot handle stairs let's get on up here and talk to this guild master shoot this guard in the face oh that's what you get guard for looking at me you and your crazy bowl cut get with the times man and he wants us to take a caravan to Proven, which is right next door so we might as well do it There we are, and Proven is right there, so this is actually a really short run for us. But I think we'll still get a reasonable amount of XP for it, which is why I shall engage. That XP, I don't think, is redistributed to my party. But at the same time, any little bit of XP... Oh, 430. No, it is redistributed, so Mathel just hit level 8. So cool, these are actually good ways to get extra renown too, so... If you're low on renown, just do a couple of those worthless quests. Additionally, we should probably be checking around... I think Beheshter is compatible with Metheld, but I don't remember. We'll hire him and we'll see what happens. With him, Beheshter is a braggart. And so he always talks about, like, a ridiculous tribe, and then he killed a guy, and now he's... He's in exile. Basically, he's an exiled warrior who killed somebody in a duel. And so he wants what? Oh, he wants salt, that's right, and 400 dinars. So we'll pay him. That's put us down 1,000, though, which means we're at 3,800. And we have no gear for him. So I think in the next episode what we'll do is we'll go fight some sea raiders to see if we can't get some more chainmail for all of our new party members. And once we get them some gear, we'll be ready to maybe sign on with a lord. I don't know if we're quite ready to sign on with nords just yet. But we've got a perfectly good amount of bowmen still, which is making me pretty happy. We haven't lost any of them. I don't think we suffered any casualties in this episode whatsoever. So I'll see you guys next time. Take care out there, everybody. In the next episode, we may sign on for some Nordic War. Take it easy and farewell.